Hello and welcome to the video. Now, about a week ago, I did a video with Mark, one of the iNav developers, and we talked about some of the cool stuff coming in iNav 8.0. A couple of things really caught lots of people's attention. One of them was GeoZones, and that's something that Mark actually put together and one of the big contributions that he's made. Massive thank you to every single one of the developers as part of the iNav development team. You guys are absolutely knocking it out of the park. And because I've had quite a few people contact me who are interested in the GeoZone stuff, and because the GeoZone GeoZone, if I can even say it, stuff is pretty solid at this point. Release Candidate 3 is out. I've got a flight controller flashed here, so I thought I'd actually set it up and just very quickly go through all of this stuff. Now, by watching this video, it doesn't mean that you can completely ignore the fantastic documentation that exists. Do go and check that out. There are lots of extra hints and tips and stuff in there. And as the GeoZone system continues to develop, I'm sure extra things will be added in here. But this is one of those kind of cool things that when you see somebody do it inside IMF Configurator, you kind of go, ah, oh, yeah, get it. It makes a lot of sense. I know for me, playing with it after a couple of times, it kind of made an awful lot more sense. So I thought I'd do this video to kind of show you how this all works. Now, very quickly, what are geozones? Well, it's like geofencing. Oh, geofencing just tends to be a very simple kind of radius from a position beyond which you're not allowed to fly. Geozones is a little bit cleverer. You can actually create different shapes, not only that kind of circular shape and assign a height to that as well as a, both a, a place you can fly and a place you shouldn't fly, but also you can have great complicated polygonal structures that also have height as well, and that might encompass your flying area, but also other places too. And those not only have a two-dimensional aspect, but they also have a height, both maximum and a minimum height. So if you wanted to, you could make it so that the plane would fly over certain obstacles. Or in my example, one of my flying fields has things like high tension wires near the edge. Maybe they have things like a road in the distance. You can set it up so those are classed as no-fly zones or excluded geo zones. There are a couple of caveats to be aware of. Not all flight controllers will support this. It needs a reason about flash memory. So things like your F405 base wings and things like that are going to be fine. Things like the F722, because of limited flash storage, won't support GeoZone, so be aware of that. And there are a couple of other caveats too. So again, don't just watch this video and not have a quick look at the documentation. If GeoZones are interesting to you and something you want to play with, by all means, watch the video and it'll make a lot more sense. But I would definitely want you to watch the video, kind of read through the documentation. It should make a lot more sense having watched what I'm about to show you. So here we are in iNav 8 Configurator. Again, I'm using Release Candidate 3 because at the time of recording, iNav 8 isn't finally out, but this shouldn't change from now till the final version. Let's just connect to the flight controller. I've got this flashed with iNav 8 Release Candidate 3. Navigation is showing as not safe as we don't have a GPS lock, but everything is nice and blue. That's all really good. So a couple of things we need to do. First of all, in the configuration, we need to go down to the very bottom and turn on GeoZone. If you don't have that turned on, all of the goodness will not appear. The other thing we can do is go into advanced tuning and at the very bottom of advanced tuning, there's a whole new section called GeoZone settings. Now, again, the documentation is very good at explaining what all this does. And if you can't quite remember, if you hover over the little question mark at the end, it'll give you a hint. But detection distance, that is how far from the edge of a geo zone you can get before the warnings start appearing in your OSD. Uh, avoid altitude range. That's the altitude difference that will automatically climb to when you're approaching a no-fly zone. Um, so be careful of that in things like fixed wing because you don't want too steep a climb. The safe altitude distance, that is the buffer below the height which the model will not go. So say for example, you have 100 meters as your maximum height. If you set it for 10 meters here, it means that the model won't fly over 90 meters. Why is that useful? Well, maybe you're actually executing a very steep climb. As it passes through that 90 meter mark, it'll actually level out to make sure that you don't breach that upper altitude limit. Safe home as inclusive, guess what? If you have safe home specified, you can actually have them saved as basically inclusive fly zones. Safe zone, zone action, defines the action if safe home is enabled and inclusive. This is helpful for flying fields with distance or altitude restrictions for line of sight pilots. Multi-rotor stop distance, 
that's the buffer from the edge of the zone that the model will stop if the fence action is avoid or loiter. And don't worry, we'll cover this in a minute when we set these things up. Uh, for fixed wing, it's calculated from the loiter radius of the plane. So for multi-rotor, how far and how long it takes to stop. Last one is what happens if it can't find a way home. If return to home can't find a possible route in failsafe or return to home modes, the aircraft will either emergency land or return to home in a straight line and kind of ignore all the no-fly zones. So those are the things that you set up first of all. Once you've got that set up, then if we go into mission control, you'll notice that here at the bottom, we have an extra little icon that's called GeoZone. If we click on that, it'll start the panel. Now I've just got this set in a random place in the UK. Uh, when we get a 3D lock, we'll have the big black thing here at the right hand side. So let me try and do this before we get a 3D lock. So I'm doing this indoors. We can very simply say, for example, we're flying in this area and there's a farm that we don't want to fly over and we don't want the model to fly over in a return to home situation. We can add a geo zone uh, by default. It's circular. We can make it exclusive and we can drag that over wherever the farm is or whatever. And we can add multiple of those so that we make sure that we never have a situation. We can change the radius. We can also change the altitude as well, because although it looks like a little circle here, it's kind of like a tin can. It also has a vertical size too. Let's just get rid of both of those. Let's define the area that we'd be happy flying in. So let's set an inclusive or fly zone, geo zone. So this time we're gonna take it to polygon. It's gonna give us four edges. Let's drag those to the outside of where we'd be happy flying. And it may be that we also can fly down here. If we make it so that the hand goes to a little finger like that, we can click on that line, add another point, and we can be quite cute about how that's set up. So that might be the edge of the zone that we want to fly. Again, in here, we can have a minimum altitude, which might be if it's a corridor over something like a hill or something else, we can have the maximum altitude and we can also whether or not it's reference sea level and what happens if we hit the edge. So we can have it to avoid position hold and return to home. We can have it set for none. So basically it'll just come on the on-screen display and tell us we're reach the edge of our permitted geo zone. We can have it to avoid. Avoid is the one where if you're a fixed wing is quite cool. It kind of bounce off the edge. So it will kind of do that um, so that it's like a billiard ball. If you're a fixed wing, that could be quite fun. It means if it was a square, it would just kind of bounce around forever. You can have it set to position hold or to initiate initiate return to home. We'll set it for avoid for this one just so we can fly around. So there we have one zone set and we could have it so that if we had multiple places that we could fly, but they were separate, maybe there's another one up here, another flying field that we go to. Let's set it for polygon again. There we go. 3D <laughs> GPS is just locked up. So we'll have to deal, just live with that. So maybe that's the other one that we can fly in. And again, when you arm within a, geo zone a fly zone within geo zone then basically this is the area that you consider you can fly in now we could actually make this so we could join these two together or have them overlap is probably a more um, easy way to do it now you can see i accidentally clicked not on the line by next to it and that's created a waypoint we don't want to do that let's just make sure we click on the line and we'll click on here and we'll drag these two geo zones so that they overlap. When they're overlapping, there's a couple of key things that you have to remember. The zones have to overlap on at least two borders and the points where the borders touch must be at least two and a half times the loiter radius for an airplane and at least two and a half times the multi-rotor stop distance. If you have multiple zones like this overlapping, the other thing that you have to be a little bit careful of is to make sure in terms of the height distance, because again, these aren't just two dimensional things on the ground. They also have a height element too, and we can change the height. It needs to overlap by at least 50 meters. So it may be that 
we have a corridor or something going from one to the other and that corridor might have a minimum altitude then you might have it so that they overlap you need to have them at least 50 meters overlap to give the model a nice big slot to aim for to transition from one to the other when you're flying around or initiating the return to home let's get rid of that second geo zone there we go so now we can just have our standard one that we're looking at first of all we can also add polygonal exclusion zones as well so if we make it exclusive so maybe as part of this it's not just a simple farm or something we want to avoid what we actually have is maybe there's a line of high tension cables or something here that we don't want to fly in and they may have a specific height so it may be 150 meters or if we want it so we never go anywhere near them if we set that for zero then basically that means that the maximum height this kind of thing doesn't have a maximum height you just avoid it all the time personally the way that i would do this because it's so close to the edge is i would get rid of geozone 2 and i would add or make the zone look a little bit like this so that we don't have to worry it's all part of the same zone so we have the same issue it won't go into there and we don't have to worry about it again all the latitude and longitude and everything from all of them are set in here once we have geozone set up the way that we want to then we can save it to the eprom it'll both save and reboot the flight controller the flight controller needs to reboot in order for this to all work now again i would heartily recommend go and read the documentation about this there's a load of gotchas and other bits and pieces just to make sure that you don't get into trouble obviously there are new on-screen display elements now that will allow you to have the information displayed on your screen so you know what it is just to reiterate what i said in the introduction be careful because if you're flying in something like manual or acro geo zones although it'll appear in the on-screen display nothing will happen however if you are in other modes then those other modes it will take over um, and make sure that like for the fixed wing if we've got it set it for a void it'll do that kind of bounce off the edge so hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that are interested in the GeoZone stuff. I think going forward for most of my flying places that I do, I'm going to just add a regular GeoZone with a specific height, which is equal to the maximum ceiling that I'm legally allowed to fly here in the UK and just have them on all of my flight controllers. And then when I'm flying around, if I'm getting to the edge of it, it'll just remind me it's time to turn back so that I don't wander into anywhere that I shouldn't. But for those of you that do more complicated flying or maybe you want a situation where you want the plane for a return to home to actually fly around specific things then this is a great way to set that up thank you for watching my video check out the playlist and adding painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content if you haven't done so already please hit the like and subscribe button it helps a lot you can support the time i spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description